Uh, Shagri, can you hear me? I've lost the chairman. Right, okay. Uh, all right, so I'd like to welcome everyone to, the, to this Funding Your Studies event, which is organized by the OFNC under our To the Roots initiative, where charity and also a company limited by guarantee. So our headquarter is in Manchester. We have branches in 23 cities all over the world, so we may not be too far from where you live. Our aim is the advancement of the Christian faith and particularly the relief of persons in conditions of need, hardship, or distress. UFNC was formed predominantly by students who came to study in the 1960s. Today, UFNC consists of virtually all professional men and women in all walks of life. We would like to support younger people to develop their careers and also to know God. I was myself a student at Imperial College in London, having studied in Nigeria. I did my postdoc at Oxford University before joining Oxford Brookes University, where I have been a professor of mechanical engineering for 13 years. When I was in London, I enjoyed the support of the UFNC there the families welcomed me and uh, gave me quite a lot of um, refreshment, especially with food. OFNC has various groups ranging from children, youth, 18 to 30s, men, women, and others. Should you decide to join the OFNC, there will be room for you. As part of our uh, charitable work, we contribute to our students' initiatives where we can. We contribute to relief of hardship here and in Nigeria. And the program we have today is part of our charitable work. You may also be aware that recently we sent some funds aside for the relief of students who may have been impacted financially by the COVID-19 lockdown. If you have seen the advert and you qualify, please apply. Uh, finally, we contribute towards sickle cell anemia research. This is a disease which disproportionately affects African and Afro-Caribbean groups. Uh, we thank God also that um, he helped us to build a 50-bed hostel accommodation for internally displaced people in Nigeria. These were people without uh, shelter. So this, some briefs about our charitable work. Before I close, I want to share my screen with you so I can show us some quotes which I find useful. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So you will see a coin. That's the two pound coin. And if you look at the side of the coin, it says standing on the shoulders of giants. This is a quote that is accredited to Sir Isaac Newton. It says, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So tonight, what we are trying to do is to lend our shoulders to you so you can stand on and uh, see further than we have seen. Our desire is for you to be greater than we have been. I also have personally a quote that uh, really excites me a lot. And that is um, by Prophet Jeremiah, which says, this is what the Lord says, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength. The worthy in his riches. This was 
said uh, 655 BC. I learned some things from uh, take on Dr. Uh, Aleku Ikundu and uh, uh, any other person who may be helping us with it. So, I meant Godwin. Thank you very much. Good. Um, thank you so very much, uh, Professor Dirudala, uh, for that excellent remark. And uh, of course, if you're interested in knowing more about the OFNC, um, we've, we've got an email that you can email us at um, info at ofnc.org.uk. Info at ofnc.org.uk. So if you have any queries, um, you can send an email uh, to that address. You can also look up the OFNC website at um, ofnc.org.uk. So it'll be www.ofnc.org.uk. O for Oscar, Fox Truck, November, Charlie. And um, you'll find more about OFNC. Right, um, I think we're set to go to our presentations. And uh, to start with, I would like to welcome Dr. Babajide Milton Makole, um, who has joined us today from Lagos. Um, Dr. Macaulay, if you just mount, if you can, um, uh, Prof, are you okay to stop sharing your slides? Um, Dr. Macaulay, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. Perfect, we can see your slide. Um, I'll just give a brief introduction and then you can start your presentation. Um, Right, uh, Dr. Babajide Milton Macaulay studied biology at the Federal University of Technology. Um, those of us in Nigeria will probably know it as FUTA, uh, which is in, uh, in Ondo State. Uh, he obtained a master's in sustainable environmental management from the University of Greenwich. That was in 2013. And um, he were together in Manchester, um, where he studied for a PhD in environmental geochemistry and geomicrobiology and he obtained his PhD in 2019. Um, just in the context of this program, it'd be interesting for you to get to know that both his master's and his PhD studies were supported by the highly prestigious Commonwealth Scholarship. Um, currently, he's a lecturer in environmental science at the Federal University of Technology. And um, I, I think one very important aspect um, that I need to highlight while he was studying in Manchester, he founded um, an online platform called Illumania. Um, and this platform has been very successful in providing um, support to international and prospective international students. And uh, he has also recently presented on similar topics uh, at the British Council of Nigeria event. Uh, great to see you again, Babajide, uh, and I'm delighted to yeah, welcome you. Thank you for having me. This presentation. So do I have the floor? Can I go on? Yeah, so you have the stage. All right, thank you very much. Thanks again for having me. Um, I've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to be a bit quick uh, with my slides. Um, so I was speaking quickly on funding opportunities for international students. Okay, so the first step is to find the appropriate scholarship. That's the first step. And so I have a list of about 11 um, scholarship sources that you can use to your advantage, as well as the degrees that you can apply for and the country, the study destination. So the first one is the Commonwealth PhD scholarship. You can use it to obtain your PhD fully funded in the UK. You also have the Commonwealth Master Scholarship, but this is only for masters in the UK as well. Then you have the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, masters as well in the UK. Um, the difference between masters and the shared is that when you win, um, every money you'll be paid 
will be shared between um, your host UK institution and the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission. So that's the reason why it carries the tag shared, but it's just similar to the master's as well. Um, for you have the Shevdin Scholarship, it covers just the master's in the UK. Then you have the Erasmus Mundi Scholarship. This covers master's and PhD. And you can, this is so good because you can have your PhD in a consortium of European universities. So you have your master's or PhD in about three universities, not just one, but about three of them, depending on the study track. Then you have that scholarship. This would help obtain master's, PhD, or short courses in Germany and some parts of Africa. Then you have the NNPC Total International Scholarship. This is particularly for Nigerians, and um, you can use it, use it to obtain your master's, particularly in France. Then you have the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship in North America, Europe, and Africa. I can give some examples of the universities in this region. So for North America, an example is McGill, the University of McGill in Canada. Then for Europe, the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And for Africa, you have the University of Cape Town in South Africa. That's actually the best university in Africa. Then you have um, the Swedish Institute scholarships for global professionals. This will help you get your master's um, in Sweden. And then you have the Orange Knowledge Program for your master's or short courses in the Netherlands. And lastly, is university-based scholarships. Now, for university-based scholarships, you would have to take time to find out from each university the internal scholarships they've got. So this will take a bit of work. A good example is the London Metropolitan University Postgraduate Scholarship. It's an internal scholarship for masters offered by the London Met uh, in London. So the next thing, after you have found the scholarship that is appropriate and that you are eligible for, please, I advise that you should not apply uh, for a scholarship that you're not eligible for. So make sure you visit the website, be sure you've digested the content, be sure that the eligibility criteria and the selection criteria that you actually meet them all before you get to this next stage I'm about to talk about, which is to get prepared early. Usually scholarships are a year long. So it's, if, let me take a good example here now. So if you are to um, travel out of the country, say September 2021, this is the best time for you to begin to plan because by September 2020, the scholarships will be open. So as soon as they are open, the process will start and you will not be able to be September. So if you are to prepare, this is the best time to start, usually a year earlier, usually a year earlier. So you need to get some documents and I'm going to run through them. You need your bachelor certificate or its equivalent. You need an official transcript. You need an, an international passport. You need a proof of English language proficiency, especially if you are not resident in the UK. You, um, and you need one of these three, either a letter of English language proficiency from your university. Some universities will take this from you. And I think it's free of charge as long as the language of instruction in your previous institution is English. Then the second is a standardized English test. You can either write the IELTS, which is a UK-based English test, or the TOEFL, which is an American-based English test. Either one is good. Um, just read up on what is required because some universities will tell you that they want a minimum of 6.5 on the IELTS or 90 for TOEFL. Some will tell you no, they want it higher. Uh, for IELTS, they want it at 7.0. For TOEFL, they want it at probably say 100. So you need to check the English language requirements of your host institution that you have selected. Then lastly is the WASP. Now that this stands for West Africa, Senior School Certificates. I know this will be a shocker, but some UK universities actually accept your WIEC from you. What, they are not after the rest of the subjects, they are only after the English. As long as you have a grade of C6 in English and the certificate is not older than 10 years old, some UK schools will collect that from you. So you need to find out. If it's not on the website, send an email to the admissions or the international office. 
the email of the admissions or international office. Send an email and tell them you have the WASC. This is what you have. Will it suffice for the English language uh, proficiency? And then you'll be surprised that they will take it from you. And then um, the last thing I want to talk, talk about here is the referees. Now, this is something that people don't really talk about. They feel they can just choose anyone. But my advice is that you should pay critical attention to who you choose as your referee because your reference letters are also graded. They are looked at. Why? Because anyone can say anything about themselves. But when you have a credible source, a third party, a credible source that can confirm your sterling quality, your character, someone else can confirm, then it solidifies your claim and then they trust you. So it's important that you pay attention to who your referees are. Then key things to take note of, your referee must be readily available. Your referee must have online visibility, which means that I should be able to go online on Google and see his works or her works. He needs or she needs to have digital footprints of her work. And lastly, must have an institutional email account. I'm talking about domain names like edu.ng. I know in UK, it's ac.uk. In the US, it's .edu. Um, but they are not going to take domain names like yahoo.com or gmail.com. So take note of this. Quickly, I also want to talk about um, things you could do to improve um, um, your competitive nature or strength in relation to your peers when you, when you apply for a scholarship. Because scholarship sponsors are looking for the very best, the very best in a cohort. So when they look at um, a cohort, they look at the best in relation to his peers and they pick out um, the very best. So I want to run through these. These are different factors that you can work on to improve um, your strength. And if you see that you are weak in certain areas, you can make an, a frantic effort to improve yourself. Now, your CGPA, this is probably fixed for some of you who have graduated. So there's nothing you can do about that. But there are still things you can do about the others. Academic laurels, have you won anything in the past? Relevant internship that is consistent with the master's or the PhD that you want to apply for. Work experience that is relevant or consistent with the master's or PhD you want to apply for. Membership of relevant professional bodies, um, academic conferences, where you presented. I'm not, I'm not talking about where you attended. I'm talking about where you presented either oral presentation or um, a poster presentation. Then academic publications. I'm not talking about publishing online, maybe in a blog. <laughs> I'm talking about academic papers in peer-reviewed international journals. Um, then online short courses relevant to master's and the PhD course that you are seeking for. And then you have leadership experience, voluntary experience, Financial status, you must be able to prove that you are able to fund yourself. And then quality of reference letter, that again has come up. So this depends on the quality of the referee because you'll be able to deliver the content. So choose wisely.
Uh, what's going on? There. So um, there are a couple of scholarships, like I said, which are some are stipendary, some pay you just the fees. And often some universities also have a one-off scholarship or discounted fee where they tell you, okay, if you come and study with us, we'll give you so some amount of money off uh, the fee. Um, yes. But it's really important that you check, always check the eligibility criteria because some of these scholarships are often only available to UK and UK citizens, but there are some that are open to international as well. But the funding, of course, university funding is always allocated based on uh, your academic merit. Also, there are some companies and charities that also fund PhDs, um, uh, studentships at PhD level. Some at masters, but you've got more at PhD level. Uh, so if you're funded by a company, for instance, often they will have a requirement where you have to spend, say, three months working as in that company as part of your PhD. But also that's a very good avenue also for getting you know, a permanent job when you finish, often with the same company, but not always. Universities also, in addition to the 380 million from the UK RI, universities also have some internal budgets for uh, studentship. So it's, it's really worth checking with your potential supervisor to find out if they have internal funding that you can access. A good place to you know, also do is to just do a lot of web searches, uh, look for internationalscholarships.com. And because this is a Christian forum, I want to just quickly point out uh, the Mustard Seed Foundation. I did apply to them when I was doing my PhD. I didn't get the funding, but they're a very good body. Um, the Mustard Seed Foundation is a very good charity, uh, Christian charity organization that fund churches but they also fund Christian students. So they have something called the Harvey Fellows Program, which provides financial support to Christian students who are pursuing graduate studies at premier institutions around the world uh, in areas where they consider that um, Christians are underrepresented. So if you're studying a niche subject, it's really worth having a look at the Harvey Fellows Program. Of course, yeah, um, I get a lot of Nigerian students who want to come and do a PhD here. And one of the questions they always ask me is, do you have scholarship? And if no, how can I support myself to do, the, do this study? So if you're, if you're unable to get a scholarship, a scholarship uh, whether you're a home or international student, it's worth also considering certain options. If you're a home student, if you're a UK citizen or UK resident, uh, which is definitely to remain, it's worth looking at the UK government doctoral loan. The doctoral loan scheme can help you pay your fees and living expenses while you study. Also, some inst financial institutions also give a professional and career development loan, which you can get from either the banks or from your employer, especially if the, uh, the, uh, the studies you want to do relates to what your employer is doing. And of course, there's the part-time work op option. Um, I would say from my experience that the part-time work option works best if you're a home student. Actually, it only works if you're a home student. If you're an international student, often you have a restriction on number of hours you can work. So it's not the best option for international, but it's a good option for home students. But of course, you have to be mindful that the fact you're working will have to compete with the time you have to do your studies. But I want to say a little bit about doctoral um, loan by the UK government, because that's one area that a lot of home students don't even know about. So if you go to gov.uk slash doctoral loan, uh, you find out a lot about it. So in terms of the eligibility, uh, it depends on your course. So it must be a full-time course, a standalone doctoral course, not one of those supported by companies. It cannot be a top-up uh, degree, for example. And anybody who is 60 years and under can access that. So if you're thinking about going back to education, to do a PhD, that's something to consider. Your nationality and residency status is really important. So you have to be a UK citizen or a resident. And it gives you up to 26,000 um, pounds for, for your, your studies. They divide the loan into each year of your study. So you don't get all of them at once. You get it every year of your study. And it's paid directly to you. And so you've got to be mindful.